Hello, and welcome to the Thinking Jew Podcast, where we dive deep into Torah and Judaism to uncover its hidden beauty. Come join us as we take a closer look and breathe new life into traditional Jewish ideas. And now, here's your host, Rabbi Moshe Siegel. Hello, and welcome to episode 75. I actually prepared an episode on a totally different topic for today, but unfortunately earlier today I learned that one of my close rabbis recently passed away. This rabbi influenced me tremendously and was really the one who opened my eyes to the deeper side of Torah that so many of these podcasts reflect. You can find his fingerprint on most of the ideas that I share here as well as in person, so I decided it would be appropriate for me to share one of the thoughts that I heard from him in today's episode. I actually heard this from him 10 years ago on this very week. His name was Rabbi Eli Margolis, Zechitadek Levracha, and I had the opportunity to attend his classes in Jerusalem for around five years when I was living in Israel. In addition to being a tremendous Torah scholar and a key disciple of the past generation's greatest Jewish philosophers, he was also a charity collector and distributor, always looking out for everyone else's needs. I hope that this thought of his that I'm sharing with you today, as well as all of the Torah that he taught me, serves as a tremendous merit for his soul in heaven. As I mentioned in episode 73, we're currently in the middle of the counting of the Omer, in which we count seven weeks, which is 49 days, from Passover until Shavuos, or from the exodus of Egypt until the receiving of the Torah at Sinai. The deeper sources teach us that this 49-day period can really be broken down into two sections. The first 32 days, and then, beginning on the 33rd day of the Omer, called Lagba Omer, the final 17 days. So these two sections, the first 32 and the second 17, represent two distinct elements of this process of leaving Egypt and preparing for the Torah. On a simple level, the numerical value of 32, the amount of days in the first section, is lev, and the numerical value of 17 is tov, which implies that the primary idea we're working on as we progress towards the receiving of the Torah is lev tov. Lev meaning heart, tov meaning good, a good heart. This fits nicely with the Mishnah in Ethics of Our Fathers, Chapter 2, Mishnah 9, in which Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai instructed his students to go out in the world and research what is the most important character trait for one to develop. When they each came back with their answers, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai responded that the correct answer was the one that chose Lev Tov, a good heart, because a good heart includes all of the other character traits as well. So on this level, this is what we're working on during this Omer period. We're developing our Lev Tov, our good heart, which is the basis for all other positive character traits. In a fascinating insight, the Bnei Yisachar supports this idea and writes that the Torah itself hints towards this, that Lev Tov, or a good heart, is the primary character trait, because if you count the words in the Torah up until the first time the Torah uses the word Tov, meaning good, you'll find that there's exactly 32 words prior to it. And the 33rd word of the Torah is Tov, implying that the key to the Torah is a good heart, a Lev Tov. That's the basic concept, but it goes much deeper. The great 16th century Kabbalist Maharal writes that in addition to the numerical value of 32 being lave, there's another value that it represents. The numerical value of 32 is also the numerical value of the word kavod, or honor. And the two sections of the counting of the Omer, explains Maharal, actually reflect kavod and tov, honor and good. So what does this mean? What does honor have to do with counting the Omer and preparing for the Torah? And what exactly is this good that we're referring to? My Rebbe, Rabbi Margulis Zechona Levracha, explained these two concepts separately and then put it all together. Let's start with Tov. Good. Nachmanides explains that Tov is connected to the concept of permanence. The word Ra in Hebrew, which is the antonym of Tov, means evil. It also means wobbly or impermanent like the word ra'ua. Tov means good and implies a certain level of permanence like we find throughout the story of Genesis. After God created something, it always says God saw that it was good, which Nachmanides explains means he gave it that element of permanence. 
And the understanding of this is that every evil will eventually become undone. It can't be permanent and it can't stay that way. The bad guy eventually gets punished and his deed removed, whereas good will always eventually prevail. Good people will eventually take their place with God for all of eternity. So the concept of long-lasting is connected to the concept of good. What is the most permanent and lasting thing in existence? God. God is also the greatest good that exists. Like the verse in Psalms 136 states, Hodu Lashem Kitov, let us praise God, Kitov, because he is good. Kiliolam Chasto, his kindness endures forever, clearly linking these concepts of God, goodness, and eternality. What is honor? What does honor represent? So, honor is an interesting thing. It only exists between two separate entities. And it can only exist when there is a choice. You can't honor yourself. Honor always comes from a relationship with someone else. You can honor them and they can honor you. Why is that? Because honor always comes from a decision. Honor comes from the choice to prioritize one thing over something else. For example, if you were to ask me a question, I have the option. I can listen politely and respond or I can blow you off. When I listen kindly and respond, I'm honoring you. I'm honoring your question. If I were to blow you off, I'd be dishonoring you. Honor always stems from a choice. Parenthetically, for those of you that know Hebrew well, that's why we always find the word kavod attached to malchus. Kavod malchuso, we say. We'll never say kavod memshalto, because malchus always implies choice, whereas memshala is controlled by force. So you can only have kavod, honor, by Malchus, because honor is always associated with a choice. When we discuss honoring God, it's only possible for us to honor God when we also have the choice to disgrace Him. That's why the verse says that God created our world for His honor. That means that God created a world in which He is hidden, and we have to struggle to either do what is right and godly, or to follow our evil inclination, our ego, and go against what God wants from us. It's this struggle that allows us to reveal God's honor to the world. When we make that choice, when we choose to be godly, that means that we're prioritizing God over our own sensual pleasures and desires. And that's the greatest honor that you could give God. So we began by quoting the Maharal that said, The 49 days of the Omer can be broken into two parts. The first 32, which is kavod or honor, and the last 17, representing tov or good. And we explained that kavod is a concept that can only exist in a world of struggle, in a world in which God isn't openly revealed, as that's where we have the opportunity to choose God over the alternative, thereby honoring Him. But tov or goodness reflects God's essence. God is good. God is permanent. It represents the world of Torah, the world of God's essence. Good represents the destination of our journey. The purpose of choosing to honor God in this world is so that we can deepen our relationship and connect ourselves to God through doing that good so that ultimately when we pass on from this world, we'll remain connected to that ultimate good for all of eternity. So honoring God is the process that gets us to that ultimate good. This is what we say every morning during the blessings of the Shema. In describing the awesomeness of God's creation, the Siddur states, Tov yotzar kivod lishmo. Listen again to these words. You'll hear the same two concepts we've been discussing. Tov yotzar, he created tov, good. Kavod lishmo, honor for his name. Rabbi Margulis Atzal explained, that whenever you create something, you always have the final goal in mind. Before you build a house, you draw up a blueprint and figure out what it's going to look like. Before you start running a business, you have a product or a service in mind of where you want to get your business to. When you're looking to accomplish anything, you always have to know your goal before you start. In Jewish thought, we refer to this as Sof Maiseb Machshava Tchila. The final action was the initial thought. So Tov Yatsar means God created the world for the ultimate purpose of good. And how do we get there? Kavod Lishmo, through providing honor to his name. So let's put it all together 
and connect it back to the counting of the Omer. We previously explained that the Omer is the time period in which we transform from physical beings to spiritual beings. On Passover, we were physically freed, but it wasn't complete until we received the Torah at Mount Sinai. We begin this process with 32 days of Kavod, which represent the struggle of our world, the difficulty of choosing to live a life in which we express God's honor in the world over prioritizing our own self-comforts. Once we succeed in those days, and we choose Kavod Shamayim, the honor of God, we then enter into the period of Tov, of goodness. Beginning on the 33rd day of the Omer, the light of receiving the Torah starts becoming more and more palpable. We can already sense that we're coming close to that relationship with God, that ultimate permanent goodness that we're striving for. And that is the deeper understanding of these two sections of the Omer counting, eventually leading up to the ultimate revelation at Mount Sinai and the deepest connection with God possible in our world. I give us all a blessing that we should merit to lead lives that bring out the honor of God in this world and allow us to connect to that greatest ultimate good, God himself. Until next time, wishing everyone an amazing week. Thank you for listening to the Thinking Jew podcast and for taking the time to study Torah and deepen your connection to Judaism. If you found value in today's episode, please leave us a rating or review and subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or topic requests for Rabbi Moshe, please email the Thinking Jew podcast at gmail.com or visit thethinkingjew.com.